Hi there! Welcome to Summer Storytelling. I'm Sherry Rita from Wilmette Public Library and I have been spending the summer reading stories from all over the world so that I can find the best ones to share with you. And I have a story today that comes from the Andes way down at the bottom of South America. It's a story about a king who was so miserable that he was making everybody else crazy and miserable too. See, this king had forgotten what real life was like. When he was a prince, he had gone out with his friends and he'd gone to the carnivals and the harvest feasts. And with them, he had splashed water and he had tickled each other's noses with basil and he had danced the night away. But when he became king, he started to think he was too dignified for that kind of play and too dignified for work. And he just sat in his turret and watched the people go by. He couldn't smell the basil anymore. He could hardly hear the music, but he could smell the scent of his neighbor Florinda's empanadas wafting up to his turret window. And one day, after hours of that tantalizing smell, he yelled down from his turret, hey, come work for me. Florinda looked up, said, hmm, no, nah, I don't think so. She went back into her house and she got another batch of her empanadas, which she sold for a living. And she brought them outside to cool. And the king said, come on, I'll pay you double. And Florinda said, no, I'm kind of happy the way I am. And she went back into her house and she got another load of her empanadas and their gorgeous smell wafted up to the king's window. And he said, I'll pay you triple whatever you wish. And she said, well, okay, I'll try it out for triple my pay and for just one wish. What's that? She said, I'll let you know when I need it. King said, I have one condition too. You stay out of my business and I'll stay out of your kitchen. Well, that condition didn't last very long because the smell of the empanadas was so good that the king practically set up house in Florinda's kitchen. And Florinda's kitchen was right next door to the royal court. So she couldn't help but overhear the next morning when two farmers came in, one dragging the other. And the first one said to the king, your highness, I caught this woman stealing my peaches. I've been tending them and taking care of them till they were at their ripest moment of perfection. And last night when I went to bed, she came and stole them all and I saw her running off with them to market. And the other woman said, I didn't steal them. I brought my own peaches to market. I have a tree too, you see. And she pointed out the window at the walnut tree in her backyard. But the king, who didn't know one tree from another, said, well, if you both have a tree, case dismissed. Well, Florinda thought that was a pretty stupid decision. So when the king came in for supper that night, she gave him a little lesson. She put a plate in front of him and it looked like his favorite roasted potatoes and he bit into them and went, Ugh! what is this? This is turnips. I hate turnips. Where did you get these? She said, from my potato plant, your honor. And the king said, nonsense. Turnips don't grow from potato plants. And she said, no more than peaches grow from walnut trees. Good night, your highness. And she took off her robe and she left for the night. The king frowned. He didn't like to be shown up like that. And he thought, okay, well, next time, next time there's a hard case like that, I I'll... I'll ask questions. He got a chance the next day when two ranchers came in. 
one rancher was riding a beautiful mare and she said, this man stole my baby horse, my foal. And the other man said, that's not her foal, that's my foal. This is my horse's baby. He was riding a stallion. Now, everybody knows a stallion can't have a baby. But the king was too caught up in thinking about the questions and trying to make up a test, right? So he made up a test. He put a line on the, on the ground in the street and he had the foal walk the line and he said, babies love their mothers. Whatever side of the line that that horse goes to, that's the side with its mother. So he put the mare on one side and he put the, the, the um, stallion on the other. And he set the foal on the line, but the foal was a newborn baby. And it stumbled and it just happened to stumble on the side of the line with the stallion. And the king said, that's the mother. Case dismissed. That Everybody knew that that decision was wrong. I think even the king might have known it, kind of. But nobody, not even the king, questioned the king. And so the decision stood. But that evening, when the king came up for dinner, he sat at the table overlooking the window, and Florinda said, Oh, look, there's Juan Cristobal and his mother. And the king said, What are you talking about? That's two men. And she said, so it is, but one is following the other. Doesn't that make one the mother and one the baby? And the king frowned and he started to get kind of mad. But Florinda just took off her robe, her apron, and said, Good night, your highness. See you tomorrow. And she went home for the night. Now the king was stewing. He hated to feel stupid. He said, next time. Next time, I will consider the evidence. Well, he had a chance to do that the very next morning. First thing in the morning before he even had his breakfast. Two people came in. One had bet his friend, I bet you can't stay overnight outside without a shelter. The other friend did it, but the better wouldn't pay off. The king said, well, I need evidence to solve this. Can you provide me with any evidence? You stayed out all night. And the camper said, well, um, yes, I broke some Nopalitos off a cactus to eat. You might find the place I broke them. And I know where there are some owl's eggs because I saw the owl nesting. And I might be able to find the embers from a fire I saw up on the mountainside. And his friend said, aha. Fire! See, I told you he kept warm. And the king went, oh, uh, okay. Well, that's evidence. Uh, case dismissed. And the two men went off. One of them happy, the other one kind of grumbling. The king came up for brunch, very, very hungry, to see that his breakfast wasn't ready yet. There were two eggs in a frying pan over here, but the stove was over here. And the king said, what do you think you're doing? Those eggs are never gonna cook over there. And Florinda said, well, why not? If a fire on a mountainside can warm a man in the valley, then surely that stove over there can cook these eggs over here. And the king said, you're talking about that fire, that's it. You're fired. Get out now. And Florinda shrugged and said, Okay, your highness, just give me my wages and my one little wish. What's the wish? She said, I ask you to just close your eyes for five seconds and breathe. And when the king closed his eyes, she took a sprig of basil like they use at Carnival. She wafted it in front of his nose. And suddenly, as if waking from a dream, the king remembered. He remembered being young and going to parties. And he remembered Carnival 
and he remembered the joy of the farmers and the ranchers and the people all together. And no, stop, he said, stop everything. And Florinda froze, and the king ran out of the castle. And he went to find the farmer and the rancher and the two betters. And he reversed those decisions. And then he made a decision of his own. Florinda, he said, I made a mistake. Would you be the kingdom's judge? You're so much wiser than I am. And, and maybe you can teach me how to cook and I will serve you the empanadas. So Florinda agreed. She became the judge of the kingdom and the people in the kingdom became happier. And the king became a very good cook. He loved trying out his recipes on Florinda because he knew he could always count on her to tell the truth. I hope you liked that story from South America. I have another one for you next week. A very fine story from merry old England. And I look forward to seeing you then. Have a good summer.